This is a video about with one primary objective and that is to show you how to automate this business of creating the check boxes and what we're going to what I'm going to show you is how to take a bunch of trues and falses here okay I'm going to start over with a lot of this stuff all right and uh, show you how to create a bunch of the check boxes and the reason for that the reason for that is I'm making working on a little financial model and in this financial model the idea is I want to take the, the their little kind of convenience stores and there's a big database of the convenience stores with all these different store numbers and all these different brands and and all of that. And the idea is if you build a new store, you should be able to make a comparison of the EBITDA, the gross margin percent, the, all these kind of rentals per square meter, all of that stuff. You should be able to compare to other stores. Now you have to select different stores and there are different classifications of stores. So we've got a few uh, classifications over here somewhere. Come on, we've got some class one. I just kind of disguised things a little, class brand one. So we can take an average for a for a brand, an average for a class, or we can make a little sample. That's where we're going to put the true and false in. And we're going to use a whole lot of match, a whole lot of match, a whole lot of true and false, and we might just take one single store as a comparison and then finally we're going to make a little graph and put in the graph all these assumptions now um, give me one second while I, uh, this is a financial model of Vestas okay I guess it, it was repaired somehow and the place to start with some history and after you start with some history you can go into the financial models and use the average if or the sum if or a direct input and select one of the three and then you can make a forecast that's taken from your input and when you um, make your kind of graph of everything I hope that I oops just a minute uh, I don't know if I have a I have just a graph data Okay, we can compare, I, I don't have two, oh well, you can compare two kind of things and get all the uh, uh, comparisons and um, I should have had one where here, we have one where we have a history and a forecast and we can compare it in different cases. Now that sounds completely different to what I'm doing but it's actually the same sort of thing. This time, I'm going to take those comparison stores and show what the forecast is compared to our different ways to make a comparison. So it's a very analogous uh, kind of situation. And I'll be talking about the Vestas one later on because there's some real issues about computing return on invested capital for some companies, you know? So that's the sort of graph we're going to make. Now I'm just going to try to get to the point for once. So the first point, and, and then you can, some, uh, hopefully, uh, well, some of you will turn the video off immediately. And the first point is to, to uh, be able to make these little true falses. I find myself doing that quite a bit. So here, the first thing let's do is let's go to our assumptions page and then we have a store comparator and for right now we'll just say we're going to compare this to either brand 4 or class 5. Now step number one is to if you've got a database like this is to kind of go to the end and put brand uh, we can call it something like brand switch and we'll do this a whole lot. Excuse me, I can't even. And then you go, we'll go to our brand, okay, somewhere here. All right, 
Uh, come on, get there, get there, get there. Ah, there it is. And we put an equal sign and we kind of go to the, I'm going to go to our comparatives and put this brand 5 this, and, and press the F4 to lock it in. Okay, and then we have all of our uh, uh, some falses and mainly falses, a few trues. Okay, I should have perhaps uh, done the uh, conditional formatting thing. And how about I'm going to put a brand count, and we'll just take this one and multiply it by one. So. And then this one plus the true and false. So then we get kind of how many, how many brand, how, oops. Oh, sorry, it's this one plus that one, okay? Excuse me for that. All right. Okay, and <laughs> I'm really getting a good start on this. didn't do anything wrong. I just had this little stupid thing pressed here because I have one store that's not showing up. That was kind of idiotic. All right, so we only have six of this brand, but then if we go to our assumptions and let's take, a, I put a little list box of all the possible brands. Let's take this one as brand 10 and this one as brand, I don't know, brand... Uh, three. Okay, so if this is just a simple, I, I, I'm sorry, I have to say this. This is just a basic index function where we take different possible scenarios. Now, did I do, did I leave this here? Just a minute. Ah, I think I put it here. Ah, oh, look at they, what they did. This choose function. Oh my gosh. Oh, and they got, have references here and everything else. I shouldn't. I'm not supposed to rant. I got in trouble for ranting. Sorry about the rant just now. Okay. Please just use the index and the match and look up. Don't use index and match when you can use look up if it's in order. But if it's not in order, you still have to go back to the index match thing. Okay. So now let's put our kind of put our comparatives and 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 show now. I don't know how many we need. I'm going to press 1 and press Alt-E-I-S. I'm going to make it go uh, columns to, to 200. Now, if you don't, if you want to use Alt-E-I-S with it, you could press Alt, and then you can go to the Home tab and find this fill. And So you pet Alt-C-I or something and get a series. You can do it a different way, okay? And then what, what, we're, what I'm going to do is now just find the row number. So I'll, I'll put row num, which is the mat, with match. Okay, how's that? All right, I don't know if you like that, but we put match, and then we match this one against the, uh, all of the different things here and put it, I don't even really have to put anything in. I can just uh, do it like this. So our number one is in line 47 and so on and so forth. And then I should put a match and get a zero so I don't have those other things. Excuse me for that. So we, we kind of like the NAs. And then we can put our store name, which is an index once we have the match, and just go to the database again. This is strictly kind of stupid uh, uh, database things. Okay, and then we can put our match. Now what I want to do is be able to select different uh, uh, stores. So let's just go to the assumptions for a minute and copy our thing where I, I could put different brands. So I don't know if you recall, but what I did is made the 
made a little uh, uh, option. So if I press number 10, I get nothing. Oh, great. Uh, now I'm going to have to pause again. Crap. All right. Okay, I'm not starting over this time for once. So, I, uh, what I did is, just to let you know, because it's not directly part of the video, but it's very closely related, so I just made a drop-down box with all the brands, put an index. Whenever you have a drop-down box, it's most 99% chance it's going to be associated with the index. And then once I get an index number, I put it back here. So in the assumptions key, I said, oh, okay, maybe we want to use a little drop-down box instead of the, the, the uh, data validation. So then if we press true here, it, it, it uses the drop-down box. If you press false, it, it uses the data validation. Okay, so now we can go into our comparatives and say, ah, brand number one. Oh, there were a lot of them. And brand number two. Uh, and again, now what I'm doing here is we're going to put a little true-false associated with all of these. And then we would like to get an average. Brand three seemed to have nothing. Brand four, brand five, just had a few. Brand six, only had two. So when we can go here and just get our total sample, which will be, excuse me, the maximum of what we did in that, what we put in that true-false thing, okay, which is all very related. We are going to work a whole lot with the true-false. So sometimes we have, here we have 36, and now we want to be able to select 196. That's so many, 49. We want to select just kind of one of these from our sample, okay? So how do we do all of that? Nine, we have three, 12, okay? So first, here is the deal. Now, I was gonna do this right away, and now I didn't. I, I made this new, I went to dinner with my friend from Amsterdam, who I helped out a little. He said, your website stinks so bad, but it's on this wiki spaces. I'm kind of stuck. So I wasted all this time putting this thing. But in the Excel utilities, I'm going to put this file. I haven't put it yet. So I kind of have a little summary for each one of them now, where you can hopefully find some key files. But on the Excel utilities, which, of course, it's mainly the read PDF and the generic macros and all that, right now I put it on the disk. So I put it on the, the, the uh, in ch chapter one, I put it in scenario analysis. And in scenario analysis, if you go to this thing that's named list boxes and checkbox, there's something that says uh, attach multiple checkboxes. And I just find this useful. And here's why. If you have a checkbox and have to right click on a hundred of these, that's why I just showed you that it's a real pain. So I made something, I press, if you press initialize, it kind of runs the uh, little auto open or runs a little thing and it says shift control E to create a, li a, a checkbox link and then it says number one, create the checkbox. Number two, copy the boxes and the trues in the different rows. And then you have to find the number of the checkbox with a macro. And that's all over here. So I, I, I shouldn't really say step one anymore because I put the other steps, okay? And then after you copy the checkbox, we're going to run this shift control E. So let me kind of explain how this all works. I think I, I might have done it in another uh, uh, video, but I, it was kind of a mess. So we're, I'm just going to press true, okay? And j I'm just going to double click now. Of course, that works, but there's no control, shift control R. That's, and then we insert a ch one single checkbox, okay? Well, it's going to be a lot more than one. We're going to insert them all, okay? I'll try to get it small, and I'll try to line it up just about to the, to the right place. Maybe I 
should move this a little over. Is that about right? So now this is kind of a pain. You have to copy it, okay? But after you copy it, of course, you can start, you know, multiple copying. I tried to do this in the macro, but it was a real mess. So I said, well, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good, and let's just at least get the thing that was really the hard part, that was just, can you imagine right-clicking on every single one of these? So this wasn't that bad. We, we take all of these, and we just copy them all the way down. Okay? Whoops. <laughs> Maybe I should have switched the video off again for this one, okay? All right, and I still am not finished, so... All right. Okay. And... Now I'm going to switch it off just in. Okay, finally. I shouldn't have admitted that, but I have all these... Uh, oh, I made two extras. Okay, it's too bad. So I have 567 checkboxes. Now that was a pain to do, but uh, uh, it would be a lot more painful if you, if you did this by hand. Okay, so here's what you do. You press shift control yeah, before you do that, excuse me, you right click and go to assign macro and say this is checkbox 374. <laughs> I'm going to even write that down for a minute. And just to make sure that, you know, it, I didn't kind of go backwards or anything, when you go to assign macro and edit, that's checkbox 941. And the, the, the finishing row is. Well, let's do it all the way to 577. So we're going to start on row number number 9. So you press Shift, Control, E. And you say, I'm going to start on row number 9. This is just, if you make a macro, you just go to the kind of the insert and you put something, it's called show form. It's not a big deal. Okay, and then the end row we said was 577. I'm glad I wrote that down. And the number of the first checkbox is 374. That's the biggest trick. And then the letter that we want to put the true and false in, that's what we're going to attach to. Maybe it should say column letter to attach true or false is column F. Okay, and then you press implement. And let's see if it worked. Oh, it's just working. Okay, good. I, that would have been too fast. has to spend a little time working. Okay, so I did what I wanted to tell you. Once you run the macro, all of these things switch around. Okay, that's good enough. And um, let's just do a few things with that. So that's the big deal. That's a really pain to do. And I struggled with it to get the kind of row numbers right and all that stuff, but this is the best I can do to get that. But then, you, then it's kind of powerful. Now, we might want to set everything to false. So all you do here is you take the whole thing, let's make a range name, and call it... Uh, 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 I'll call it switches, switches one. Is that okay? I think that's okay. And then we'll, we'll just make a, a little Alt F8 to get our macro and put a, a new thing, switch one false. Okay, and all we do is go around, as usual, for i equal 1 to range switch 1 dot count and we for each element then range cells and this is only one column so we put an i for the row and a 1 for the column dot range switch 1 
this is kind of one of the first things I think I ever did in a macro, uh, uh, equal false. And then you just next I. Uh, I hope that works. Okay, as usual, save... Oh, no, we better save it as a uh, macro-enabled file, of course. Okay, this is the first macro in this whole big file. And uh, let's go to the developer tab and put a little regular old thing here, and then eventually I'll name it set to false, but, but and look in this workbook, and we'll see if it works. So, again, save it one more time. Oh, I'm totally nervous about it. Okay, and <laughs> debug, great. Uh, switch one, range. Okay, shoot. Okay, I hope this is what I did is I uh, spelt the name of the thing wrong. Okay, and it's running, so that's good. So the next thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make a conditional formatting. And when we have the NAs, we don't need to show anything, really. So we'll make a conditional formatting for that. And then we'll select a few of these. And then we'll make another con conditional formatting and kind of show a, highlight the ones that have the have the true or false. So maybe I'll add a couple of others. That, that's our store number. The real database had all these nice addresses in it and everything else. So let's first, to do our conditional formatting, step one is to select the area. Step two is to go, of course, to home and conditional formatting, go to new rule, go to use a formula. And for the formula, in the first one, we want to take everything. So you press F4 until you get rid of the, all the uh, 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 things. And I was wrong. We'll, we'll make this one, excuse me, and we'll just put the F4 on the D. See, I'm not really very good at this, am I? Not equal. And then we put in quotes N slash A. Okay, and then if it's that, let's format it as, uh, how about we'll, we'll fill it with the white, and we'll put a font that's also a, uh, a white one. Okay, and then you press OK, and uh, I did it wrong because I meant to say if it is equal to, if it is equal to, oops, not, not equal to, if it's equal to NA, and we apply and press OK. Let's see if that worked. Okay, so, uh, all right, just a minute, make absolutely sure. Okay, well, I learned something today. In this conditional formatting, you have to... Uh, Use the isNA function. Can't put a kind of test. So just uh, to make to to make sure it doesn't color when you have an NA, just use equal isNA and use the dollar sign just on the on the uh, 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 D. Okay. Hmm. Well, I hope I didn't irritate you too badly on this. I'm totally afraid of this man who gives me all these thumbs downs all the time. But what the heck? The, the, uh, okay, so now it, I, I, sorry, don't, again, I'm, I'm saying not, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good again. I don't know how to get it not to show this with the formatting, okay? And then now let's do the next one, let's practice. So get the whole thing and let's do another conditional formatting. So again, you go up to the top, I tried something else. Somebody in the last class I had asked me, why do you have to go to the top left? I don't know. I, I think it makes some kind of logic. It, I think it's some kind of logic. And then you go up here, and then you go to conditional formatting, new rule. 
you go to use a formula, and this time on the formula, let's go to this one and press the F4 a few times and say, I only want to format this one, so I put it the dollar sign on the F, not the 9, and I say I can say equal true or just leave it blank. I'll, I'll use the true because for some reason I, I get nervous about it still, and then let's make the font... Uh, uh, how about we'll make the font red, and this is such a big decision to try to figure out what color to make it, okay, and then we'll, okay, uh, maybe we should have made the, uh, <laughs> this is such a big deal, figuring out how to, how to do this formatting, isn't it? Uh, let's make the uh, fill color uh, yellow or something, okay. All right, so that shows you how to um, incorporate some of this stuff now. Oh, I should have done something else. All right, I'm going to say, well, if we have a true and false, I just want the average of only those stores that have the, 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 the true here. And how can I do this? What I'd like to do and I'm not saying I've done this before, but uh, that's why I'm making a video. Uh, I'm going to put the, the uh, at, so selected as average. So we just, we'd like a true, and we'd like it to say when we pick one of these stores that we selected, we'll just, we'll just do it as an average. Now, there's probably a better way to do this, but my first thought on doing this one is simply to uh, uh, let, let's I'm gonna put in the row number here okay equal row uh, with an open and close bracket and then what we can do is is make another match so we'll take our comparatives and uh, uh, I'm gonna put the only time I'm going to have a have something here, I'm, I'm going to insert it here, that's what I was worried about. I'll say equal, if this is true, then we'll take the row. Uh, I think we could have done it with a counter as well, because the counter is in there. In fact, I think I'll do it like that. If this is true, then we'll put the counter in. Okay, so we only have a couple of numbers here. How about how about I'll put this this in the middle, okay? So that we have 3, 10, 13, and 19. That's what we have. And then we can take our, oh, let me go to our database, and we can just put a little, so I don't need the row number. Excuse me, I was going to do it with the row number, but that's an alternative way to do this. And then we can match this one against the, the uh, and I'm hoping it doesn't match the zero, that's, I've got to, maybe I'll have to do it with the row number, against this whole column, uh, and press the F4 key, and then I'll put a zero to get an exact match. So that's good, we like these NAs. And we, the only time we don't get an, oh no, Ah, it didn't work because I, I did need the row number. I'm going to pause and do it with the row number, excuse me. Okay, so uh, to review, excuse me, if it's being unclear, I just said, well, if it's the true, if this is true over here, then take the row number, not the counter. Otherwise, leave it as false. So we have row 38, 113, 125, 151, and now we go back to our list uh, our master and then we have row 38 which is store 945 okay and that is store 945 correct okay and then finally 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 we can then put a is is n a is is NA, the same way we did that, okay, and that gives us true, but we want 
a knot of this. Okay, it's kind of funny. And then we have our down in, hopefully in row number 38, we have a little true. Okay. And I should have made maybe a conditional formatting on the true. And now that's the good news. Because finally, in our assumptions page, and this is what I'm trying to get to, <coughs> excuse me, so if I, and now, I, we'll, I'm going to, if it's the average, uh, this is, what we, were we working on, the brand or the, so this is, the, if it's the average for the brand, okay, then I, and I am on a new kick, I say, all you need is, is mainly lookup, no match index normally for a financial model. You need the index, of course, for all the scenarios. And then you need the sum if and average if, and you can do it just about everything. Now, in this case, we, of course, needed the match, too. Our match was a really big deal. Okay, and then we can, uh, so in the assumptions. Now, I want the average of the, the size of the store for, for the whole brand. So I put an average if. That's what I was trying to say. Average if. And then we go to our database and just click on this brand switch that we already did. And then put comma true. And, and then somewhere I have the kind of typical store, store size. So all of these statistics, when you have a database, all that you can take any one of these statistics and, and really do a lot with it. Okay? This is the trading area, and use the whole line. That's a really big deal, okay? And that, that gives, so the, our store that we were trying to build is a whole lot bigger than the average. Now, if I do the sample, I put average if again. Uh, come on, AV, average if, tab. And then this time, we use the true-false again. So I guess the other thing, I, I, I'm just obsessed with this true-false. I hope you don't mind, but I really think it it's, uh, can be so helpful. And then we'll do the same thing. And then it will just give us the average for the whole sample, for the, for the you know, the whatever, the, the, the little true-false things we did. Getting those true-false, that's a big deal. Okay? And then, you know, it... Finally, we're going to put in a, a single store and do the same thing. And then we just have one single true to compare it. And then I could, we could get the average for, for the class. So that's how to uh, incorporate a little of these things in kind of a corporate model. Now, that's only part one. I'm going to do, I'm going to have another part two. And I know this is not exactly a really exciting theoretical uh, 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 video, but whatever, I'm going to keep it.